So what did you learn from this session? That's what I'm interested in. Maybe the more powerful one is the internal conversation. Okay, there is an internal conversation.
just because I belong to a certain family, some choices, even if they are legitimate choices, are not available sometimes. I don't experience that freedom. We often feel frustrated and helpless by circumstances. Circumstances are nothing but a set of relationships. Amma, so on and so forth. She doesn't want me to go to US. I want to go to US. Going to US is a legitimate choice. My Amma doesn't want me to go. Now, these are circumstances. I feel helpless. I know, you know, I have such talent. If I go to US, my talent will blossom and I will have this great future, but I cannot go. Just one example. On a day-to-day -day basis, there are numerous such circumstances that we encounter, yes or no? Yes. We do. By sheer function of being in UP, meat is not available in marriage. Legitimate choice. Halal food, not available. Because we are in a certain set of circumstances. Now, who determines our circumstances? Ourselves, parents, let's go slightly deeper. Society. Society, okay. Yes, they do. But do they really? Do they have that power? Hmm? It is by chance by birth, okay. So who determines that? <coughs> Not determine circumstances. Why? Why not leave it to us to determine our circumstances? Allah knows better. Allah knows best. Yes. Uh, tests in what context? I mean, what does Allah really want to test? For example, somebody is born uh, in absolute abject poverty. What is the test there? Okay, when did Allah Ta'ala introduce Banu Adam to the rest of the Makhluk? In which chapter of Quran is he talking about? I am going to send huh? Surah Bakr. What does Allah Ta'ala say in Surah Bakr? I am going to send a Khalifa. Khalifa to earth. And so what does everybody else say? Why do you want to do this? I mean, this guy is capable of a lot of corruption and bloodshed. Why would you want to send somebody like this as a resurgent to earth? So what does Anatara say in response? You don't know what I know. Stay in your place. Don't transcend boundaries. You don't have all knowledge. And then, Adam al -Salam is chosen to present himself in front of everybody. In that gallery, in that audience, in that auditorium. That must have happened in heaven. And then what happened? Yes, sure, but I don't know if it happened there. My suspicion is it happened before, but we don't want to go there. That will be tricky terrain. But what did happen there is that Banu Adam and everybody else had an exchange. And they got to look at Adam, Baba Adam, and say, wow. What an amazing creation. Allah Allah proved to everybody that this is indeed an amazing creation. And when everybody sees that, they are already subhanAllah. They are already subhanAllah. Except for, of course, Iblis. Right? Iblis is burning in envy from inside. 
this yesterday's kid is suddenly, you know, getting so much dignity and respect from Allah Himself and from everybody else. So what happens next? What happens next? Allah asks everybody, go down to Adam. And everybody does except for Ibn. Now, my question to you is, was that prostration to Adam exclusively for Baba Adam? <coughs> or was he representing each and every single Banu Adam in that moment? Each and every single one of them. Oh, so what does that mean then? That each and every one of us sitting in this auditorium has received a prostration from entire universe. All of Allah's Mahlo going down and sajda. Why did Allah Ta'ala give you? Now I'm going to speak in first person. And each of us should from now on speak in first person. Why did Allah Ta'ala give you this is us. This honor. Why? What's so special about it? We is not acceptable. I is acceptable. That's the only currency in language that can work. So what's so special about you that Allah Ta'ala decided to honor you with this sasta? Okay, you put the seed in the soil. And what next? Water. 
and then you water it. What oil does it get exposed to in the process? <coughs> Different seasons. Different seasons. Which season are we in now? Summer season. What's great about summer? Huh? What's great about summer? Mangoes is great about summer. What else is great about summer? Vacations are great about summer. And what is not so great about summer? Huh? Very hot. Right? Now, however, this very hot season is the best time for a mango tree. The most respect it gets throughout the year is in summer season. Everybody is going gaga over a mango tree. Oh, such lovely mango tree. It's giving so many mangoes. Oh, be careful. This is the best mango tree. You have to treat it with a lot of respect and dignity. Now suppose the mango tree says, oh, I love summer. I don't like these other seasons. Monsoon, ah, too much water. I don't like it. I only want summer. Suppose a mango tree does that. What would happen to a mango tree? Huh? Hi. What's the first thing that will happen to a mango tree? Yeah, not, that's not the first thing that happens. <coughs> If there is a bad monsoon, then the flowering that happens in the next season is poor. If there isn't the right winter, the flowering is again affected. And if the flowering is affected, what is affected simultaneously? The fruition is affected. The capacity of mango tree to fruit is affected. And if fruiting is affected, what will happen in the next season? How many people will flock to that mango tree? Um, maybe we should cut it off and use the wood for timber, doors, windows. That's what happens. So seasons are good or bad. Seasons are neither good nor bad. All seasons are beneficial. Good bad is your judgment. Right? Medicine can be very bad. Ah, I don't like it. It is beneficial. Medicine can be very good also. But that's irrelevant. It's beneficial is important. So all season is beneficial. Is this okay with everybody? Remind so if human beings have to blossom and fruit, what are the seasons? Circumstances. There are 7 billion people living on this earth today. 7 billion people plus. And Allah Ta'ala is manufacturing 7 billion plus seasons for fruition of 7 billion plus Banu Adam. Same event does not influence and affect two brothers living under the same roof. Because they are made separately, distinctly. Their fruition is distinct. So the first conversation is the conversation Allah Ta'ala is having with all of us. Allah Ta'ala never stops speaking to us. And the way Allah Ta'ala speaks to us is by creating circumstances. All our circumstances are a direct message to us from Allah Ta'ala. You may think, ah, I don't like this circumstances. You may think, ah, I love this romantic circumstance. But that is irrelevant. What is relevant is that it is a conversation that is happening from Allah to you, specifically to you. 
and all circumstances are beneficial, no matter how painful they are. For a seed to tear open and for the plant to emerge, it must be very painful for the seed. When a human child is born to a woman, it is extremely painful to the woman and to the child. But it is also one of the most celebrated moments of our lives when a child is born. Rarely ever do we not celebrate the birth of a child. But it is very painful. So, whether something is painful or whether something is joyful, is there an event? Everything is beneficial and it is Allah Ta'ala speaking to us. That's the first conversation. What's the second conversation? I mean, has already used that. Every time we step into a situation or circumstances, what happens to us? We start talking to ourselves. Oh, I like this, I don't like this. That idiot, why should he show up now? Why this? Oh, you be Aditya Nath. Oh my God, now what will happen? Moody has become be a oh no. What will happen to Muslims in India? Oh, now we are not even allowed to eat beef. We are having some conversation with ourselves. Oh my God. How are we living in a marriage is not what we ask ourselves. Oh my God, Tribhutala, that's a conversation. We are having some conversation with ourselves. That's the second conversation. And the moment we have a conversation with ourselves, there is evoked in us a, a sort of um, <coughs> compulsion to act. We make a choice. The choice may be good or bad is again irrelevant. But every time we make a choice, the third conversation is we are speaking to Allah. We are saying to Allah, Allah, oh you did this now, no, this is my answer to you. So every human being is having two conversations. The third conversation is Allah, Allah having a conversation with Padmata, which is you and me, all of us in this hall and outside. The two conversations we have is a conversation with ourselves and a conversation with Allah. But when we are kind to somebody, our mother, our brother, or the stranger on the street, even though that person is just cut us off in traffic and you know caused us scared, we have option. We can shout. We can, if we have an opportunity, grab that person and give him some lessons because he has earned that. Or we can try and deal with that situation in a way that pleases Allah. That's what Allah meant that I have not created Adam and Jinn except that. They are in my worship, except for Ibadah. Ibadah is not just what we do when we stand on the Musalla or when we open the Musaf. Ibadah is what we do every time we have a conversation with ourselves and every time we make a choice and so we act. It is either Ibadah or it is not. Are we good with these three conversations? Okay. Now, there's enough of one day speaking. I have a fantastic equation that I'd like to introduce to you. But quickly partner with a person and sit facing that person. <laughs> Don't sit sideways. Give each other the honor of fully facing the other person. Sideways sitting is actually not a very honorable way of responding to people. Are you alone now? Okay. Uh, you may have the permission to become a tribe. Become a group of three. That's okay. And sit face to face. Turn towards each other. Fully. <coughs> Alright. <coughs> Close your eyes while you are facing each other. Close your eyes and quickly take an overview of your life, the life that you have lived so far. Especially focus and shine light on 
the glorious moments of your life, the glorious successes that you have um, had the great fortune of experiencing in your life, from your childhood right up to now, just quickly. Whatever qualifies for a glorious success for you. Whichever is your favorite, around that, pay attention to the circumstances you are in, the people you are with, uh, the efforts you are making to achieve your success of glory. Recollect as vividly as possible. Some of the challenges you encountered, perhaps, and overcame. Mm -hmm. uh, if you've been able to recollect as sharply as possible, um, quickly rub your hands, generate heat, palms together, bring your palms to your eyes, and open your eyes. Now, please pay attention to the instructions. Uh, we are going to, within, uh, we have about 15 minutes. How much time do we have in totality? In totality? Okay. So we have about 10 minutes. You have about 10 minutes, which means in 5 minutes, quickly share with your partner uh, your story. Our partner has an important responsibility. Pay attention to the success story of your partner. And in that, Try and identify some of the qualities, gifts, strengths, um, character, attitudes, positive stuff that has helped our partner achieve this success. Let's make this quick after that I have about 15 minutes to introduce the equation to you. Uh, both ways, so five minutes over, partner shifts to the next partner and the same narration happens. Write a list of everything that you're discovering in each other. In the group of three, you will have to sort of manage it in, in three, three and a half minutes per person. Please take one minute to wind up the first person and then shift to the second person. The rest of us, please take two minutes to wind up. Finish and come back to the large group discussion, large group conversation. Give me how you're feeling right now. Huh? Excited. 
fantastic, excellent and good are not feelings. Okay, let's get past these three. How are you feeling right now? Happy. Huh? Happy. Excellent is not a feeling. Happy is. Okay, you're feeling happy right now. Okay, what else? Okay, you're feeling grateful. MashaAllah. What else? Motivated, relaxed. Yes, these are feelings. What else? Contented. What else? How do you feel about each other? Huh? A good is not a feeling. Okay. There is more respect. How is this respect coming up? What happened because of which you're feeling respect for the other person? Interaction has led to connection. Do you feel connected? You feel respected? MashaAllah. Alright. Anything else that you want to add to the feeling list? A very valuable question and I'll share with you quickly why. But before we get there, anybody wants to add anything more to the feelings list? Oh, that's a part. Excited, that's a feeling. Excited, lovely. So we'll take a pause here. Right? This is an interesting feeling landscape. Okay, so what did you discover in your partner? What qualities, great qualities does your partner have? Okay, so hard working. Hard working, honest, confident, one second, dedication, determination, self aware, passion, independent, dependent, service oriented. Time. Uh, but we'll take a pause here in the interest of time, saving time. 
right? So let me tell you about a people that I know. And I know a group of people, amazing, amazing people. Uh, I had the good fortune of interacting with them. These people have the qualities, the following qualities. They are hardworking, they are honest, they are confident, they are dedicated, they are determined, they are self-aware, they are passionate, they are in, they have an independent thinking, they are service-oriented, they are humble, they are caring, they accept challenges, they are responsible, they are enthusiastic, they innovate, they are value-driven, they are focused, they are consistent, they handle pressure well, they are adventurous, they are, have a learning orientation, they are dynamic, they are optimistic, they have great integrity, strong character, they are strong, they are grateful to Allah, they are encouraging for each other, they trust Allah, they are connected to Allah, and they are patient. And my question to you, um, as you've heard about this group from me, what is it that this group will find difficult to achieve? What is it that this group will find difficult to achieve? Unity. One second. As soon as I ask you this question, how are you feeling right now? Okay, confused. Lovely, thank you. That's a feeling. What else? Why did you Okay, so how does that that's a thought? How are you feeling right now? In the, uh, of the list. Yeah, sure. But as I ask you this question, what is it that these people cannot achieve? <coughs> How are you feeling right now? Well, what is the silence all about? The suddenly silence. What is the feeling behind the silence? Shock. Okay. You're feeling shocked. You're feeling demotivated. Suddenly. Why this question? It's almost like, you know, there was this nice balloon and it was floating in the air and suddenly somebody has brought a pin to it and punctured it. How does one feel when that happens? When somebody punctures... Huh? Okay, sad. There is sadness. Anybody feeling a sad? Is there traces of anger? Yes, yes. Yes. Lovely, 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 lovely. Thank you. Right? Ah. Two different emotional landscapes there. Yeah. Now, all of this is potential. We get the taste of this potential every now and then. Something happens in, in that particular situation, in that environment. What Allah Ta'ala has gifted us with, blessed us with, comes out. And then it goes back to sleep. Until something happens to wake it up again, and then it comes back. It's not available to all of us consistently in our daily actions. The equation that I'm going to share with you, I'm going to rub this list off. I would have liked to have it up there, but it's better off to use the upper side of the board when young then. This point is hiding a list of talents. It's going off. But this is potential, let's remember that. And uh, so this this guy called uh, Timothy Gallery. Back in the 70s, he was a student in Harvard. And um, um, even though he was, of course, a student in Harvard, what he was really passionate about was tennis. And uh, he became tennis team captain of Harvard. He won a lot of championships for Harvard University, but didn't quite make it to the Grand Slam championships. He, he, he was already a little late in his preparation for Grand Slam Championship and that really hurt him. So he said, you know, what happened to me should not happen to others. Right? A lot of us have done great things by thinking this way. So he thought, you know, I must do something for others who are passionate about tennis. I'll create a world class tennis academy. 
right? With Master's Academy coming out of Harvard, the money he needed available, the people he needed available, the land, the resources, whatever it was needed to put together a world-class tennis academy available. He's coming out of Harvard. Everybody believed him. Money, here it is. People, there. Here are uh, nutritionists, this. Gymnasiums, this. Trainers, this. Everybody is available. Our selection process is psychometric, this, that, and the other. Here. It's only the best and the cream of talent gets an opportunity to get selected into his academy. Right? And year after year, he's selecting the finest talent there is out there, finest people with potential, and he's putting them through some rigorous training, and they go out and, you know, championship after championship, they are now participating. Over 10 years, what kind of results do you think they achieve as an academy? How many champions are out there? How are you feeling right now? Huh? How are you feeling right now? Can I ask you a question? Huh? Okay. Confused. Puzzled. It's always very valuable to ask yourself this question. Puzzled. Okay. Take a guess. It's okay. The worst thing that is going to happen is you'll be wrong. Huh? Zero. Hundreds. Okay. Uh, one. One century. Year after year, best resources available. Only one person is going on to become the champion. Everybody else is falls by the wayside. And this man is heartbroken. He resides from the academy, travels the world, he visits Himalayas, he has some interaction with some Maharaja, something, something, some Baba, some Sadhu saying that he must have interacted with, and that opened up his eyes. He said, Wow, now I know why my people from my academy were not winning in Grand Slam Championships. So he went out and wrote this book. It's a very interesting book he wrote. He said, the inner game of tennis. And, and the equation, he had an equation. He eventually taught this equation to CEOs and CXOs at Harvard. Um, and he said, performance is equal to potential. Let's first clearly understand, have a shared understanding of what is performance. So can you please help define what is performance? Quickly, we don't have time. What is performance? The ability to do your work in an expected level. Action. Action, ability to do work up to expect, expected level. Huh? Implementation of potential <laughs> outcomes. Okay. Efforts to achieve a goal. All of this is true, but I share a perspective on performance with you. Well, I'll share a sort of a definition of performance. If you don't like it, you can throw it in a dustbin. Uh, I start breathing in my mother's womb. I took my first breath. There is a time appointed by Allah Taala where I will take my last breath. Everything that I do between my first breath and my last breath, including those two breaths, is performance. So my definition of performance is, performance is a human condition. Human beings are born to perform. That's what we mean when we say it's a test. Life is a test. The test starts when you start breathing. And the test paper is over when we start breathing. Yeah? So we are performing all the time. Because we're breathing all the time, right? Right now, sitting in this room, we are performing. Right? We perform in multiple contexts. Right? There is a biological performance. Our body is performing in a certain way. If we start start having a disturbance in the way our body is performing, we run to a doctor, whatever is disturbing us, we go to that particular specialization, right? Uh, we are performing as spouses, husbands, wives, we are performing as children to our parents, parents to our children, we are performing as brothers to our brothers, sisters to our uh, 
brothers, and sisters, so on and so forth. We are performing as neighbors, we are performing as citizens, we are performing as professionals. We are performing all the time. Some performances we care about. Some performances we don't care about. I don't care about whether I'm a good neighbor or a bad neighbor. Okay, no problem. I don't care about being a good citizen. No problem. There are some things we care about, all of us. Yes? Right. Whatever we care about is also performance. What we don't care about is also performance. But the performance is coming from potential. This great, awesome list that we have here, all of us has a laundry list of such qualities, and that's our potential. So whatever our performance is, is coming from potential. However, there is this pipeline, this equal to is actually a pipeline. What he said is, there are interferences that prevent our performances from, our potential from, coming through into our performance. Now I'm slightly digressing from his equation. I thank him, I'm grateful to him <coughs> for his insight and wisdom. But this is how I like representing this equation. It's much better that way for me. Right? And there is a pipeline and there are interferences in that pipeline. So potential for it to come through. If this pipeline is clean, potential will come through. If this pipeline is clogged, then only a few drops of potential, even though there is an ocean of potential, only a few drops will come through. Right? These interferences, what are they? Now what stops our potential from coming out? Huh? Responsibilities. Right? There is Zalim Dunya. Correct? This world, the society, correct? This stand in our way, right? Lovely. Right? What else is there other than Dalit Dunya? Okay. Why is everybody looking at me so suspiciously? <laughs> okay. Huh? Oh, you're thinking. Okay. It's a good thing to do. Okay? So, one is Zalim Dunya, the other is you know, the Zulm that we do on ourselves. Self Zulm. Yeah? Both of them stand in the way of our potential. Correct? Everybody is agreed? Anybody has any doubts so far? Do you want to contest anything, question anything at this point? How are you feeling right now? When I ask you a question, how are you feeling right now? <laughs> huh? I didn't get too much. Sad. Sad. Okay. All right. Sad. You said suspicious. Yeah. Okay. 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 Uh, very, very, very important. Very valuable. And I will believe you. Why I'm constantly asking this question here? How are you feeling right now? You feel fear? Fear. In the Unclear? Fear. Clear? Oh, lovely. And there is self zoom and there is Zalim Dunya. Let's first not call Zalim Dunya. We are not going to run away every, anywhere from ourselves, right? We are right here. We will deal with ourselves at peace. Let's just first figure out how to deal with Zalim Dunya. <laughs> so how, do you, how do you convert the world? What's, what are some of the strategies? Effective strategies of conquering the world so that our potential, they don't come in the way of our potential. What are some of the things to do? Quick, 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 we don't have time. Please. Huh? Uh, wisdom, okay, become wise. Uh, have effective decision making, okay. Huh? Overcome fear. Effectively communicate. Is this what you do every day? Really? Huh? 
mean that's how the, these are your strategies. I've got some everyday strategies that you deploy in your real life. Huh? Yeah! My son, please go and get some power. Get well. Go get an IIT degree, IIM degree, and then get a job in the best multinational or become a billion dollar business and make sure that you have a lot of wealth. Yeah? Effective, right? If you become rich and powerful, then obviously the world will be at your feet. They will not be able to stop your potential from coming. Nobody stops potential of what is the Rambani's name, Ali Rambani, the other Rambani, whatever. Right? Or Adani. Become Modi and go and sit in the parliament. Make sure that you are at the top of the chain. Because if you are at the top of the chain, then obviously external circumstances will cease to affect you or stop your potential. Correct? Agree? Right? All of us will enthusiastically from after this session go out and make sure <laughs> that we pursue power and wealth. Please raise hands. Okay. That's a red herring. <clears throat> what was the first part of my session all about? Conversations, right? What are the three conversations? Huh? From Allah. Okay. What is the conversation from Allah? Circumstances. What is circumstances? You can acquire so much power and wealth that Allah Ta'ala will say, Oh my God, I will start in, stop, I will stop interfering in your affairs. Go ahead and do whatever you please. Is that power and wealth available to any human being? So That's why the book's name is the inner game of tennis, not the outer game of tennis. Because inside our heads we are playing this game, you know, let me go and become stronger than that person. Then I will show them. When we play such games, our potential actually gets clogged. The only thing that Allah Ta'ala has given us power to change is inside us. Inside us. Uh, can you give me 100 rupees? Please. And, but why are you looking in your wallet? You could have given me 100 rupees for his wallet. Yeah, but he has a wallet too. Yeah, or, or the person behind you also has a wallet. Why? Any one of you would have looked in your wallet. Why? Why look into your wallet? Why not look into your neighbor's wallet? Huh? That's not our But we do that every day in our life. We constantly see what we can get from somebody. Isn't that what we do in our daily life? Why didn't we repeat that here? What happens when we look into other people's wallet? If, for example, we have repeated our you know, regular behavior in the hall, which means we start searching somebody else's pocket, what would happen? Huh? There will be some conflict that breaks up. Do we have conflicts in life outside? We're fighting all the time. Amongst brothers and sisters, in family, people we love, but they're in life. Parents and children. Because we are looking in other people's wallets and when people find other hands coming into their wallet, they don't like it. So they will push back and fight. And they will say, ah, how can you prevent me from taking what is rightfully mine? I am going to make sure that so I put more bread. This means I need to play what game? Power and money. I have no option but to play that game. Precisely the game that will suffocate and kill me. 
in this dunya and in the other, eternally, I am damned. Because that's the inner game I'm playing. And I look into my wallet, what will I discover? My potential. Okay, there is time up. There is time up. Okay. Quickly, last thing, when we look inside, we find access to our potential. Right? And why did I keep asking feelings? When the feeling landscape is positive, it is easier to look inside. When the weather changes, we are suddenly caught up in fear. And that's when we start looking into other people's wallets. Because we become desperate. We find each other often, but when we sit and listen to each other, what happens is connection. No, oh, such a lovely person, I didn't know you had so many great things. We didn't bother to sit and listen to each other. We don't listen to each other in our, even in our families. Yes, spouses don't have time to listen to each other. Both of them are Balmohanam and both of them have been immensely gifted from Allah SWT because Allah SWT felt they are worthy of a sasta. So if we want our performances to improve, we need to look inside, we need to work on inside. Inside there are two conversations that are important. What is the conversation we are having with ourselves? What is the quality of that conversation? Right? And no matter what action you choose to do, which means you shout at somebody, you're thinking you're shouting at that person, but that action is reaching Allah Ta'ala as a communication from you to him. When you hate somebody, when you are jealous of somebody, and you take actions, they are reaching Allah Ta'ala as Amal. And also a communication from you to Allah Ta'ala. And Allah Ta'ala loves you so much. And he says, no, I want you to wake up from your sleep. So what do I do? I create a special, unique circumstances for you. Sometimes it's an accident, sometimes it is fever, sometimes it is this person who's most irritating person to have around. But it is beneficial weather. All circumstances are beneficial weather. They are specially crafted for us from Allah Allah so that our potential may blossom. And it reflects in our performance. And when our performance is great, our conversation with Allah Ta'ala is great. When our conversation with Allah Ta'ala is great, love between Allah and us is great, our dunya will be great and our akhara will be great, inshallah. With that, I conclude my session. Jazakallah khair for having me here. Marakullah Hufay, just uh, stand with us. Uh, as uh, we're trying to do with every session and before we take the break for Zohar Salah and lunch thereafter, uh, stand here. Now, Alhamdulillah, how to improve in our personal dealings and improve the quality of life, seasons are beneficial, circumstances are beneficial, the conversations and so on, and tremendous learning. I want again the session, this session we are conducting, how will they adapt this to their individual selves, in their schools, as teachers, as managers, as parents. Okay, so I wanted to uh, uh, make a comment. How do you adapt this learning in your personal dealings? In any place or in any situation that you may be. Anyone? From the sisters. Yes, brother. Don't play with circumstances. If we have any issues, try to get the solution from ourselves. Think about that. Don't play with circumstances. Don't, don't play with others. Your comment on that one. I would like to comment. I, 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 I think I'm just. Come I mean, uh, when, we, when we look at circumstances, we have a tendency to immediately sort of get overwhelmed with emotions, positive or negative, right? If it is positive, we go rushing in. If it is negative, we are resisting. I don't want this, right? Uh, instead of doing rushing in or resisting, which are both not too helpful, can we be open to all circumstances? This difficult child, can I be open to, what is this child, why is this child here in my circumstances? Because Allah Allah wants something to grow in me. Which is why this child is here. What can I grow in me? What can I find in me? If I receive every situation or circumstances, no matter how difficult it may be, right? slowly over time, not just, uh, now I ask this question, nothing is changing outside in the world. Why is the weather not changing? All this does not work. No, 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 it takes time. It okay. takes time for you. Right. Anyone else?
a comment uh, and then the uh, brother of Guruji will try to come back. P is equal to? P is equal to? Yeah. Performance P is performance potential is this. This is IMP interference. How would you use it? That's the, uh, the, the, the session. How do you use it? Be optimistic with whatever we have. Now, uh, optimistic, pessimistic is, is not a very functional approach. Right? I, I would say be open, work with what I have. If, uh, if I want to build a muscle, I have to go to the gym. Right? Work with what you have, what you have will do. Be appreciative of what you have and apply it, spend it. Spend ourselves. When we spend ourselves, we grow. Okay. Teachers, how would you use that in your interaction with the parents or with the students? Yes. Have good thoughts and good actions. Have good thoughts and good actions. Good thoughts, good actions. 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 Good uh, if there is a 40 feet long bridge, 15 feet wide, uh, that was critical for people's survival, right? And we are all an extremely poor community, and we wanted to build that bridge by ourselves. How much money will you will you be able to put together to build it? How much money do you think it will take? 40 feet long, 15 feet wide. You still need money, right? How much money? Just let's start with that. Okay, anybody? Any other guesses? 50 lakhs. 50 lakhs. Anybody else? Just throw in some number, it doesn't matter. You will be wrong at first. Huh? Whatever we have. Whatever you have. Okay. This bridge was built by people in a slum for 10,500 rupees. Slum. It took them two and a half years of learning about themselves, working with themselves, so on and so forth, to get to a point where they said, we will build this bridge. And it was built for 10,500 rupees and 300 people worked for two days, day and night. Okay, parents, <coughs> how do you adapt this as parents? Yes, Uthi. Uh, I was waiting thing, I want to uh, that uh, our actions are the communication we are doing to other response with what circumstances uh, he has put us in. So that is a very good learning point. How do you adapt that as a parent? Like, especially when we are uh, angry or we are in a situation where we, we think we cannot handle it and we just uh, you know, burst out on our kids or in school or wherever. So at that time also we have to respond and ask what I am going to say, what I am going to do is directly going to address another parent. Because this is not just the person in front of me going to judge me. So, but my uh, actions are going to be great. Yes. Your comment. Yes, perfect. That's perfect understanding. MashaAllah. We could have gone on and on. Uh, so, first session was transformational vocabulary. Second, how to improve ourselves in the personal dealings with the learning that we had here. So, inshallah, we take a break now.